Hello, today we'll be looking at what's in this box from Cadex, but just before we get into that, a quick reminder, please like or dislike this video if you didn't like it, comment down below, don't forget to subscribe, and if you can find the little bell icon, please click it, it'll tell you when I'm uploading stuff. So today from Cadex, we've got this box, which contains the dolphin. Um, I'll just quickly go over what's in the box, you get these instructions, get the camera itself, the square format that's become so popular, or the cube I should say, underneath some of the packaging, you get this USB cable and this mysterious bag which contains some foam tape, a couple of screws and this, well, I suspect some sort of curious magnetic mounting. Oh, look at that. Hardware. So you can risk sticking it on and have this little leany, I don't know how well that's going to stay on. You can lean it back kind of like that. I guess that's what the idea is. I haven't really looked at the instructions. So this is kind of interesting because I remember when this was first announced and people were very excited that, yeah, Cadex is bringing out something to challenge GoPro and here's like a GoPro session. So they are similar sized. I would say that the, the Cadex is very slightly bigger, but it doesn't have anything like the spec of the GoPro. But to be fair, the price is nothing like the GoPro either. So you can get this for about £30. And at this rate, I should tell you that's something approaching 30 to $35. I don't expect it to be long before the pound has parity with the dollar. <laughs> Such is uh, the, the way Brexit's going. A little bit of politics there. But yeah, this is a 1080p camera only, but can only work in up to 30 frames a second. And that seems a bit weak for a camera, certainly that you'd be wanting to do FPV with. So I don't know if the idea of this is like, if you're new and you don't want to put something expensive like a GoPro on your camera, put something like this on. If you smash it up, it doesn't matter. The footage will be okay, but basically everyone's used to 1080p at least 60 frames per second. That is my only worry there. But you know, we will, we will put it on and, and see how it flies. So the other thing this does, they claim it's very good in low light. Uh, we'd be able to test that because I certainly know the GoPros are very, very bad in low light conditions. It's got um, inbuilt Wi-Fi and you've got an app so you can presumably connect to it and change settings and start, stop recording, that sort of thing. It's also got a resolution they call internet mode, which works at 15 frames per second. That sounds like the internet mode back in the 1990s, I think will stick with at least a higher 30 frames per second frame rate. Let's go in for a bit of a closer look and we can see how it works and how we can connect with Wi-Fi and stuff. So the setup of this one, which I haven't done yet, and I've just looked at the app that they said to download, and I kind of get the impression this is a repurposed smart device, because if I go into this app they asked me to download, which is called Adofi Go, and say we're going to add a device, and at this point I'm supposed to turn this on by holding down the power button for three seconds. And we've got that little tiny green LED there. We will see that it's all smart doorbells and other smart doorbells and smart camera. There's nothing that says the dolphin. There's this thing that says smart mini, which I'm going to presume it is, and thus do that. Please select the Wi Fi the device will go to. But I'm at this spot and typed in this password, and I'm like, actually, why on earth do I want to connect this to the internet? That's the last thing I want to do. So let's go back and actually do something different. So this has got this direct connection mode, which sounds more appropriate. And it says, press the network button. This actually says reset. On the instructions, it says network. If we hold that down. We get a little blue light. And that should be, in theory, the Wi-Fi light. At this point, I can find the DOFS, oh, something, something on my network there and attach to it. I should then be able to go back into the app and we've got standalone mode. For your safety, please set Wi-Fi. Stop trying to get my password off me. Shocking. Okay, so now it's in this mode, I can Tag. Right, having muted the volume, We've got a live image. You will notice there is extreme lag on it, but this isn't an FPV camera, so who cares? We've got the ability to sort of take a photo. We can record stuff and even presumably do this. It can change, there we go. As you can see, 
there's a fair bit of lag but we don't care about that because as I said this is just a recording camera FHD I know what FHD means it's a button and it says full HD standard D okay so I mean I might as well say about this there's an app yeah and not much not much really happens with it it it's pretty much not worth doing anything with the app unless you want for some reason to change this from full HD to something else now the reason we've got this and the reason it keeps trying to get my Wi-Fi password is because this isn't an action camera this is a little security camera uh, and the idea is you mount this up on the wall and you film stuff a little bit like these little cameras so this little camera is obviously repurposed from a little tiny smart camera which we could connect to the internet and you could look at it through this website and stuff obviously it's fairly worthless to do that in terms of using it for uh, recording your FPV flights although if you want a security camera you know it will join to the internet and stuff so yeah the the apps fairly worthless um, for what we're using it for so ignore that you don't really want to do any settings with it I just want to record with it and to do that I think we turn on we're just holding that for three seconds that comes on uh, and then I'm guessing we would press that button and what happens we get a little flashing green LED there and a flashing green LED means we're recording press it again it goes solid which means it's not recording simple as that it's interesting when you look at the instructions because even though this is like Calix FPV they still have what I can only describe as being the original instructions which was about mounting it on a wall looking down and stuff like that all very weird and that explains that little magnetic thing we had where we could tilt it it's not for FPV it's for putting on a wall so I think as far as FPV goes we're just going to put it on a quad where we can actually strap it down properly and uh, see how it goes I have to say I've, I've lost confidence a bit that this is going to work very well as an action camera because things that are designed as security cameras aren't really designed as action cameras but you know we'll give it a fly and we'll see how it is let's try it well here we are we got the dolphin mounted up on the little vortex 230 here using this one because it's a very stable flyer it's a little bit windy today but we should be okay and it's got a nice soft mount in there i'll also be comparing this basically i'll do a flight on the dolphin i'll put my gopro session 4 on or it's just called the session actually this one um and see how that does not because you know it's a little bit unfair to compare this 30 pound camera with that but just to see how this handles the conditions versus what this is going to do i don't know i haven't looked at any footage from it yet so it'll be interesting to find out Okay, so let's get up in the air with the Calyx Dolphin and see how it performs. And... oh dear. Now, I looked at this first off and it kind of looked weird. It was like some weird sort of fast slideshow. And I was thinking to myself, wow, is 30 frames a second really that bad? Uh, and the answer is no, it's not. I feel the problem with this is it the frame rate's not consistent. You know, we've got other problems. You can see it sort of jangling all around as it's going up high the the colors not right it doesn't look sharp but mostly it's not that the frame rate is bad it, it seems like it's inconsistent so sometimes it looks smoother than other times now wh when I put this on my my Mac in in QuickTime and ask it to describe it to me it told me it was getting 22.3 frames a second at 9.91 .9 megabits per second which is both odd and low but I can see little bits where it seems to hit 30 and then other bits where it where it drops down and that's a bit like if remember if you've ever played a video game and you get this sort of frame rate chug it's really jarring because you can really see the difference between it working and not working um, and it tends to work more when we sort of point towards the sky you see it just go smooth for a second because you know I've watched plenty of 30 frames a second footage and it's absolutely fine if it's consistent this is not and this is what's really jarring to the eye I think um, yeah so so not good I mean we've got uh, some horrible rolling shutter which is especially present um, if we go up high and even worse when we face into the Sun it seems a much worse situation for calling that uh, rolling shutter or jello footage 
But you know, I never fly just one, and of course I couldn't look at this on the field, so I thought I was just collecting various different bits of footage. Uh, this one as well, you will notice the frame rate sort of stutters along a bit, like it just can't handle the amount of data that it's getting. This one came out differently though, so uh, again, QuickTime reckons this is filming at 20.43 frames per second at 11.5 megabits per second. I think it's trying to take an average, and, and sometimes the frame rate's okay and sometimes it's not. Mostly it's not. And of course frame rate wouldn't matter. If you had this as it was intended, as a little internet based security camera and it was on the wall and it was filming people walk past, then if it dropped the odd frame, nobody would care. You'd still see the, the main crux of what's happening. But it's not an action camera. It's not acting well as an action camera at all. You know, I could talk about the colour and the sharpness and all that stuff which isn't very good and the rolling shutter which obviously isn't very good but I don't think we need to because we've got a big enough problem in the frame rate and I wanted to show you the footage from the GoPro session just as a comparison because you know the the GoPro session wasn't perfect either the conditions out there were windy and the sun was low and as I said that's the big thing about getting rolling shutter is it has to increase the shutter speed when the sun's shining on it and that's more likely to get the rolling shutter effect however it's an awful lot better and you can just look at this and say well you know I could maybe fix this with an ND filter and I could strap it down to the frame a bit better and I could not fly on a windy day uh, the frame rate's consistent at 59.94 frames a second at 1080p at 25 megabits per second so yeah I mean I wasn't expecting it to come close to the GoPro but I wasn't quite expecting it to be that bad either. Oh dear, Cadex, what have you done? Your cameras just lately have been pretty damn good and this has really <laughs> ruined it. Um, basically, if you rebadge uh, a dodgy security camera and say, hey look, it's a bit like a GoPro, it must be a good action camera, it's not necessarily gonna work. I can't really recommend this for anything unless you wanna mount it on a wall and have it as some sort of Wi-Fi security camera. I'm, I'm sure for that, it's quite good. For FPV, um, it's it's really not what you want. And to put it into perspective, this couldn't even keep 30 frames per second. At less than half the price of that, this little Qlima SQ12, I reviewed this a while ago. Um, and again, it, it's a, a repurposed security camera really, but it was at least keeping 30 frames a second at 1080p. Um, it would bounce around a bit, but it was at least as good as that, but half the price. So the question of, can you get a decent cheap action camera um, and I think the answer is, is yes spending a little bit more um, I use this uh, Firefly Q6 uh, it's I used it on quads I've got it on my plane at the moment and it's really nice there is a 4k version this this was the original I don't think did 4k but it did 1080p 60 really nicely and it got some great footage so there is that one but um, yeah just just not this one really um, of course, this was supplied by Banggood, and I have to say thanks for them, thanks Banggood. And there will be links down below, but unless you want to mount it on your wall as a security camera, don't get it. Uh, look at something like the Q6, uh, and you guys are more than welcome to tell me what is a good action camera for about that price uh, down in the comments below so other people can see. So we're looking about between £30-40, pounds, or if you're in the US, that's about $30-40 <laughs> at our current exchange rate. Of course, if you can afford it, I would still say GoPro is the best. The the larger Firefly cameras are also pretty good. They're sort of more traditional GoPro shapes, but um, not the Cadex Dolphin, I'm afraid. That just doesn't work. Anyway, hope that review's been helpful, and I will catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing, and if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.